Hey there, ladies and gentlemen. Today we will be interviewing Nadine Gordimer, a South African writer and fluent activist. She is well known for her activism in the anti-apartheid movement in the 70s. Nadine, everybody. Where did your interest arise from in the involvement of racial and economic inequality in South Africa? Well, my parents were both Jewish refugees, so I kind of knew what it was like to feel like an outcast. My father wasn't really interested in the oppression of blacks by the whites during the apartheid. My mother, on the other hand, felt compassion and empathy for those of color. Her activism during the apartheid inspired me to start crochet for black children. Now, what is a crochet? A crochet is a daycare facility where kids are looked after and taken care of. Tell us the first-hand experience you had with the government repression in South Africa. When I was a teenager, my family had a black servant. One day, the police raided my home and took my servant's belongings. This experience made me realize just how out of hand things had become in South Africa. What is your educational background? When I was younger, I was educated at a Catholic convent school. Eventually, my mother ended up taking me out of the school and teaching me herself. Because I was usually home alone, I began writing short stories for children. How did your lifestyle change after your short story, The Quest for Seeing Gold, was published and appeared in the Children's Sunday Express in 1937? It started off my career as a writer and continued to fuel my desire to write more stories. So tell us about what it was like studying at the University of the Witwatersrand. I was able to work with a diverse group of professionals. Unfortunately, I was unable to complete my degree, which led me to move to Johannesburg in 1948. And you still live in Johannesburg, correct? Oh, yes. I've lived there ever since I moved. Wow, that's a long time. So, Nadine, were you ever associated or in touch with other anti-apartheid writers? As a matter of fact, I was. My very first publisher, Lulu, was married to Bernard Freeman, who was a parliamentarian. Through them, I was able to meet and talk to other anti-apartheid advocates. Now, my colleagues have told me that you were married to Reinhold, an art dealer. What happened between you two? Ah, uh, yes. Reinhold was a sweet man and a very good artist. He gave me my Hugo, who was born in 1955. Reinhold sadly lost his life to emphysema several years back. Oh, yes. I've heard about Hugo. Isn't he a filmmaker in New York? That he is. I actually had worked with him on two documentaries he did. Now, how did the arrest of your best friend affect you? It made me pursue my interest in the anti-apartheid movement. I began to become more active in South African politics, where I was able to become close friends with Nelson Mandela and his defense attorneys during his trial in 1962. Wow, Nelson Mandela? He's pretty awesome. I hear that you were one of the first people he wanted to see when he was released from prison in 1991. Yes, he is, and that is correct. Now tell us about the time when your stories were banned during the 70s. Do you know why they were banned? Well, according to the Publications Committee's Appeal Board, my books were too one-sided to be subversive. My book, July's People, was also banned and taken off the school reading list. Some people thought July's People was deeply racist, superior, and patronizing. And how did you feel about those accusations? I felt very insulted and angered towards these people who were passing judgments and accusations, who didn't even know me. What was it like being a part of the African National Congress, also known as the ANC? I thought it was one of the greatest things to happen in South Africa. I was able to help you see new ideas and views in a new way. It says here that you even went as far as hiding ANC leaders in your house. Why did you do it? To help them escape from the government, of course. Wow, that seems pretty risky. Oh yeah, it was nothing. How did it feel when you won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1991? It finally felt like I had received some recognition for all my hard work. Awesome. Now tell us about your other involvement in movements. Well, in the 90s and on, I have been a part of the movement against AIDS and HIV in South Africa. Wow, you are one busy lady. Haha, <laughs> I guess you could say so. Now, in 2006, you were attacked by robbers in your very own home, yet you still refused to live in a gated complex. Why? I don't feel like I should live in fear of people who don't share the same view as me. Well, there you go, folks. Nadine Gordimer, an anti-apartheid leader and advocate, 88 years old, and she's still kicking. Thank you for coming here and talking with us today. Well, thank you for having me. It's been a lovely experience.